All right, here we go with, uh, we're going to be graphing and solving quadratic inequalities today in this video. Um, there's actually going to be three different ways or three different types of problems that we're going to be solving. So you got to make sure that you are careful when solving some of these because you don't want to confuse one with the other. First thing we're going to do is graph some inequalities. Um, quadratic, of course. Now, you know how to graph a quadratic function. You can do it using a calculator or now that you know how to complete the square and write in vertex form you could always change this one by completing the square to y is less than x minus 1 squared minus 4 and write it in vertex form using completing the square and then what you could also do is instead you can take this original and you can also factor it and by factoring it, you're going to get what multiplies to a negative 3 but adds to a negative 2. You're going to end up with x minus 3 and x plus 1. By doing that, you just found out a whole bunch of information right off the bat. You know the vertex, when you're in vertex form, is opposite of the inside comma outside. So your vertex is 1, negative 4. Your x-intercepts come from intercept form, also known as factored form, which are going to be negative 1 and a positive 3. You know that your y-intercept is going to be this number, so it's 0, negative 3. And then, of course, since they are symmetrical, you've got another one there. Um, and that's, that's what you need to do is just, if you want a shortcut, you can solve these by hand. All you have to do is use a couple of tricks. Um, or you can always use your calculator and, you know, get some of the information that way. And here we go. This says less than. So first of all, this is going to be dashed. Just like graphing a linear inequality. But then you have to decide where you're going to shade. So this says shade false. So when we shade false with quadratics, a really good idea is to put a test point. And I always say test the origin unless the graph actually crosses through the origin. So if we test 0, 0, we substitute that in here, which is 0 is less than 0 minus 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 3. 0 is less than negative 3. That is false. So... The origin is false, and since we want to shade false, then we are going to shade towards that test point. Okay, so we are going to shade towards the origin, and there you go. That's how you graph this inequality. Now, you know how to use your calculator to get the vertex, the x-intercepts, and all of that good stuff. So you could always use your graphing calculator to do these as well. I was just showing you a little shortcut now that we've spent time talking about factoring and completing the square. So number two is all you. Make sure you find your vertex and your x-intercepts and a couple other points and graph it and shade it. Go do it. And here you go. Again, the graphing part of the actual parabola is old news, so you should have easily come up with your vertex of 1.25 and 6.125 some x-intercepts of negative 0.5 and 3, y-intercept of 0, comma 3. Your test point was true. So since we're shading false, if your test point is true, you want to shade away from the test point. So your graph should look like that. All right? So basically, now what we want you to do is we want you to combine some things that you already know. You already know how to graph systems of inequalities that were linear from back in the day. And now you know how to graph quadratics, so I would like you to see if you can attempt to graph this system of quadratic inequalities on your own. Make sure you leave your answer unshaded. Go give it a try. See how you do. All right, so let's see if you got it right. Um, the first one was the blue one. Um, that's just the parabola that's opening up, starting with the vertex at uh, 0, negative 9. And then the second one is green. Notice we have a dashed parabola. And that's because the vertex is at um, negative 0.5 and 3.25. And you're coming down. So found x-intercepts of 1.3 and negative 2.3. Um, and then basically you shade. Uh, you could use test points again for each one. And you are going to shade 
on the outside of each parabola, which means this is your final answer right there. Um, it's just like graphing quadratic inequalities and systems of inequalities. Just put two together, your unshaded area is your final answer. Okay? So that's systems of quadratic inequalities. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. Okay? We are going to solve quadratic inequalities by graphing. Now we're actually going to solve for x. Notice that there is no y equals in front of this. We are not graphing a quadratic inequality. We are solving for x, but we are going to do it using graphing. Okay, so we've got to go back, do a couple of things from back in the day. And since this is a quadratic inequality, you should remember that this means less than from back in the day. So, what we are going to do is we are going to sketch the graph of this. You can use your calculator, and we're going to find the x-intercepts, okay? So, if you want, you can use your calculator, or this one can actually be factored really quick. Um, but this is what we need to do. We need to set up a couple of key points. And like I said, if you were to factor this, this would give you your x minus 5, and your x minus 1, which means your x-intercepts are 1 and 5. And then type it in the calculator really quick just to see what you need. And you only need a sketch for these. You only need a sketch. So, from here, you need to solve using an and statement. And you remember back in the day, and looks like a barbell. So it's going to be in between these two. Okay? Um, but then you have to also remember that this is a less than symbol, so these are actually not included. So they would be open circles. So your final answer just needs to be written like this. 1 is less than x, which is less than 5. Just write a compound and statement. And that's it. You're done. Now that one works out really nicely. Number five cannot be factored. So you are going to have to solve this one by graphing, by actually typing it in the calculator and finding your x-intercepts. You know how to do that. We've already done it. So what I would like you to do is take out your graphing calculator, and I would like you to sketch that graph and find your x-intercepts. Go do it. So what we have here is a sketch of the graph. Find your x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are 0.686 and negative 2.186 with the calculator. Then you just have to remember, this is greater. So this is going to be an or statement. So we look like that. And then you just have to write your final answer, which means or statements have to be written separately. So x is less than or equal to negative 2.186 or x is greater than or equal to 0.686. And that's how you write your final answer. Okay? So that's it. That's how you solve a quadratic inequality by graphing. Now we're going to switch gears and go to algebraically. You must know the difference. So, algebraically. This goes to our factoring or to using completing the square. You've got to know how to solve anything algebraically. Okay? Um, but now this is an inequality. So the first thing you're going to need to do here is obviously get this uh, less than or equal to 0. So we have x squared plus 2x minus 8 is less than or equal to 0. This can be factored. So we have x plus 4 and x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. So we have x is equal to negative 4 and 2. Now these are called our critical points. Now what we have to do is we have to go back old school again. And we need to sketch this out on a number line. So like we did way back in chapter 1, 
we only need to sketch our critical points which are negative 4 and 2 and what we need to do is we need to test all three regions meaning left middle and right so what you need to do is you need to just test something on each side so we have a negative 4 maybe we want to try testing a negative 7 so we're going to substitute negative 7 into our equation okay so I like substituting it into this one that's less than or equal to 0 so we have negative 7 squared plus 2 times a negative 7 which is less or minus 8 and we need to find out if that's going to be true or false okay so um, why don't you go right ahead and test all three regions and see what you come up with okay so our test points might be slightly different but we should end up with the same results so like I said I substituted in a negative 7 you could have picked negative 5 negative 6 negative 100 whatever you wanted and I substituted mine into here and I get 27 and that's less than or equal to 0 and that's a false statement and then you have to take a test point in between I always pick 0 when possible makes things easier so then you get negative 8 is less than or equal to 0 that's a true statement finally for the right side I picked 5 and I substituted it in I got 25 plus 10 minus 8 is 27 less than or equal to 0 no it's not that's false so that's how you test your three regions then what you need to do is you need to find your true statement and that is in between negative 4 and 2 because that's the only true part so this is an AND statement so what you need to do is write your final answer negative 4 is less than or equal to X which is less than or equal to 2 those are your critical points okay and that's exactly how you do the next one so number 7 factor it put your number line together pick some critical points to the left to the right to the middle and test them and come up with your final answer go give it a try on your own and did you get X is less than 2 or X is greater than 3 because if you did you are correct all you have to do again factor you get X minus 2 and X minus 3 which means your critical points are 2 and 3 pick a point to the left I pick 0 and after you substitute 0 0 minus 0 plus 6 is 6 greater than 0 yes it is and then in between 2 and 3 you're obviously gonna have to pick a decimal of some sort so I just picked 2.5 substitute 2.5 in you get negative 0.25 is uh, greater than 0 that's a false statement and then for the right side I picked 4 um, you substitute in you get 2 is greater than 0 which is a true statement so this is true on the outsides which means this is an or statement so then you just have to write your final answer X is less than 2 or X is greater than 3 so again you need to be careful here if it's Y is less than or equal to or Y is greater than or equal to that's an inequality graph where you do a solid line or a dash line and you shade above or you shade below if there's no Y then it is solving for X using one of two methods graphically like we did up here where you get the actual X intercepts and then we just have to gra graph in between or outside based on or, or and and then if it says algebraically that's where you're gonna need to do some factoring and stuff okay so that's that feel free to ask any questions tomorrow make sure you keep the ideas straight all right this is Longo and I'm out have a great day see you bye